everybody, this is Pete Klug. This is Display Advertising Basics Part 2. I'll be covering the ongoing shift from traditional ways of buying display advertising to programmatic buying through demand-side platforms. This includes buying through open ad exchanges, private marketplaces, private exchanges, and programmatic guaranteed. Let's start with a quick overview from Part 1. Here's how real-time bidding works with the ad exchanges and demand-side platforms. Publishers want to make their ad inventory available for advertisers to buy on the ad exchange and they want to maximize the price they can get for it. Advertisers work with DSPs and DSPs enable advertisers to access the ad exchanges and the DSPs bid on each individual user impression based on what is known about them and they want to pay a fair price for that impression. So when a user comes to a website, looking at uh, the right side of the screen here, before the content and the ad loads, an ad call is made to the ad exchange. So this whole process takes 100 milliseconds or less. The ad exchange holds an auction for each individual user impression. They send a bid request to each DSP to bid on that impression. Today, a million bid requests can go out in a second. This is happening very fast and there's a lot of data being sent around. The DSP evaluates each impression and returns a bid amount based on its value to the advertiser. So again, this happens in 100 milliseconds or less. The winning bid is chosen by the ad exchange and an ad is shown on the publisher website. Many advertisers use a third-party ad server with the DSP. So that creative can be hosted with a third-party ad server. The DSP does the, uh, dis makes the decision on where the ad is shown and does the optimization uh, of, the, of the display campaigns for the advertiser. So here are the common ways that the, the display is bought and sold. And this is, these are the most common ways from the last five or 10 years. An advertiser agency buys directly from a publisher's sales team for guaranteed inventory. The, uh, the publisher has their own direct sales team that the advertiser and publisher work with. An example of this might be a homepage takeover ad on Yahoo or MSN, or maybe it's on MSN Sports or Yahoo Finance. Uh, it's futures-based buying. The ad, the price, the impressions are guaranteed. So some example of this could be MSN, Forbes, Connie Nass, Auto Trader, any number of premium publishers. These are continue, con, considered premium buys, uh, typically more expensive and they're guaranteed. A second common way to display is bought and sold is an advertiser agency buys from an ad network. An ad network uh, consolidates or aggregates inventory from various publishers. They package that inventory up in different ways. It may be by audience, by, by uh, vertical, contextually, or by uh, pricing model, CPM, CPC, or CPA. And the ad network sells the inventory to the agency or advertisers. Indirect sold, the inventory is typically non-guaranteed. So some examples of ad, ad networks are the Microsoft Media Network, Yahoo Network, Time has their own network which includes Sports Illustrated, Time Magazine, their publisher, uh, their uh, list of publisher sites. You know, News Corp has, uh, has an ad exchange, including Wall Street Journal. Advertising.com, of course, is uh, AOL's ad network. And the last most common way the display, display is bought and sold is an advertiser buys from the ad exchange using a demand side platform. The inventory is non-guaranteed and uh, the demand side platform is a technology that an advertiser uses to reach the ad exchange to bid on the inventory that they, they want to get and they hope to get a fair price for it. So demand side platforms, some of the examples of those are Adobe Media Optimizer, Turn, Media Math, uh, Rocket Fuel, and uh, some examples of ad exchanges, of course, are the Google ad exchange, the Microsoft ad exchange, Rubicon, FNexus, and others. So today, many advertisers use an ad server to serve their ads across these three common ways of buying display advertising. This way they can have 
uh, one place to store their creative. Instead of sending out multiple creatives, they can have one served across all the different ways of buying display. They uh, have centralized reporting and uh, can track conversion attribution reporting in one central location. So they're able now to serve the ads and report on their campaigns for all three different ways of buying display in one area, in one place. So the very interesting shift that's happening today that all these different ways of buying display can now be bought programmatically through demand side platform. And according to industry research, 50% of display ad spend could be, could be spent through a demand side platform buying these different ways of display. So a few years ago, RTB and programmatic were believed to be, by some, to be poor quality and junk inventory. And premium publishers were concerned about uh, having the pre premium inventory on the exchanges, feeling it might devalue the in inventory and auction environment. They're also worried about brand safety, that undesirable advertisers may appear on their sites. For these channels to grow, display advertisers are relying on publishers making their inventory available on these channels. And this is happening more and more, and, and research is showing that it's becoming more common to buy all these different types of display buys through the demand side platform. So now, instead of a demand side platform enabling an open auction through an ad exchange, a, a demand side platform now enables an advertiser to buy through guaranteed direct for their premium guaranteed buys through private marketplaces for uh, buying on ad exchanges and through private exchanges. So there's this interesting shift that VSP is becoming central for all types of display buying as, there, as the ongoing shift to programmatic buying continues. So here's a quick uh, definition of each, each way uh, an advertiser uh, can buy through a demand side platform. So again, this is reliant on a publisher making the inventory available. Not all publishers are making premium inventory available yet on the exchanges. This is an ongoing trend. Uh, some say that up to 50% of, of uh, programmatic buying will happen through a DSP, or 50% of ad spend will be happening through a DSP programmatically within the next year. We'll see if that happens or not. So here's a quick definition. A programmatic guaranteed, we talked about this is one of the most common ways of buying display. These are uh, negotiated directly between the seller, which is the publisher and the buyer. Uh, so instead of this faxing back and forth of IOs, the process becomes automated. There's an automated RFP, campaign trafficking and reserving of the inventory. The publisher and advertiser negotiate a reserve price and a fixed price. And so one-to-one -one relationship between a publisher and an advertiser. So I think at this time I should probably mention, you know, what is programmatic? Programmatic just means that the process of buying selling is automated, making it easier for both the advertiser and the publisher tra to transact. On the other hand, real-time bidding or RTB specifically refers to the automated buying on ad exchanges and auction environment in real time. So you can see the programmatic buying more broadly includes premium guarantees as a use case where the process is automated, but there's no bidding in an auction environment. So those guaranteed premium buys can be uh, can be purchased through a DSP through programmatic guarantee, uh, programmatic guaranteed. There are vendors in the industry like a iSocket or Yield X that enable a publisher to make their inventory premium inventory available and are integrated with DSPs. <clears throat> a private marketplace is where there is pre-negotiated fixed pricing. It could be CP, CPM or CPC, whatever it might be. It's within an exchange environment and Basically, an advertiser gets a first look at an audience at a fixed price. It's not guaranteed, the inventory is not guaranteed, so the number of impressions aren't guaranteed, but the pricing is fixed. It's typically a one-to-one -one relationship between a publisher and an advertiser or a, uh, an ad network and, and, a, and, a, and a publisher. So you can see on the right-hand side are actually some examples I've seen by, by doing a quick search on the web, news cores, ad exchange, um, is making their inventory available through marketplaces. I think Auto Trader is as well. Mode Media, which used to be Clam Media, Business Insider, are all are all publishers that are that have private marketplaces to sell their inventory or are considering it uh, according to news news articles. And then uh, private exchanges 
are exchanges where participation is restri restricted to select buyers and advertisers. So this, this is also called an invitation only uh, exchange. It's auction based, so it requires bidding. The It's a one to few publisher to advertiser relationship. So a, a publisher may only be comfortable with selling to four or five advertisers. So they can invite only that limited set, select set of advertisers to participate in the exchange and bid on it. It's again, unreserved inventory. It's an auction, auction environment. The highest bidder wins their impression. Uh, Time, according to a news article, it, it has their exchange, is making their inventory available through this type of private exchange. And they include their publisher, their sites include things like Time and Sports Illustrated. The last one is open auction. This is the most common way today that a DSP enables buying of display. All buyers and sellers participate. It's an open auction like a New York Stock Exchange where stocks are bought and sold, except for the display inventory is bought and sold. There's no direct relationships, although publishers can, in some cases, block advertisers or set floor prices. But it is an auction environment. The inventory is, is uh, non-guaranteed or unreserved. It's a one-to-all publisher-to-advertiser relationship.